Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Plays Final Fantasy VII. Today, we're going to explore calm a little bit and move on. This is me, just now, some guy in a black cloak walked east towards the grassy field. He's got this killer sword and looks really scary. Okay, so you just repeat that. Yeah, I wouldn't call what Sethroth's wearing a black cloak, but he does have a killer sword, so... Uh, sure, tell me. Uh, oh, you're just, you're a tutorial guy. I thought you were giving me something actually the useful. This might have been useful at the beginning. Uh, yeah, chocobos always run away when you get off of them. Goodbye. Yes, I know, say frequently. I get it. I've made that mistake plenty of times in my life. Sadly. Get this, we get an ether. Hi, I just stole your ether. Yeah, it is pretty convenient. Now! This is a points thing. You can say, yeah, maybe, and you lose points with everyone but Y. But Y's not in the, the party yet, so... It doesn't matter. If they're not in, like, the group, if they're not recruited yet, any affection you get, or could possibly get, it's just not there. Uh, there, I guess there was an exception for, uh, Aerith and Tifa. Because, technically, Aerith wasn't part of your party when you bought the flower and you gave it to Tifa and all that jazz. But, it's still counting. But anyways, if you say you're full of it, you lose points with Y, which doesn't matter right now, and you gain points with everyone else. Which is kind of understandable, because... Think of it, like, I made this this comparison earlier, where we blew up the Mako reactor, which, you know, is a good thing, kind of, in the grand scheme of it. Uh, yeah, this kid was asking if we should go back to the old ways. If you say, yeah, maybe, you get points with everyone, you say, no way, you lose points with everyone except why. Um, but yeah, it's... I'm not sure what they had for electricity before Mako and G, if they had it at all. I think it was coal, like they were burning coal. Actually, it was. It was. Um, but yeah, like I made a comparison earlier, like Shinra, at its core, is an electric company for the most part. It provides electricity to a lot of people, everyone in the world for that matter. Um, it has other things, obviously. It has its own little army, which is bad. It has its own government body. It has its own system. So it's a little bit bigger than National Grid. So it was kind of a, a bad analogy when I said it's like someone blew up National Grid. People are going to be pissed about it because they lost power. But that's true. Like, if you if you take out Mako Energy, people are all going to lose power until they, like, switch back to the old ways. And that's not going to come at a drop of a hat. Now, if there was some way to, like... I don't know, transition back to it, which there would be, but Shinra is a, like a corrupt company. So it uh it ain't gonna let you do that. Anyway, let me talk to the dog. I don't know. I thought like God gave us something. Oh well, doesn't matter. Up we go. In here. We just we're just going in here, we're just gonna steal a bunch of stuff. There's like I think a few other treasures. There's nothing you can do about opening that uh, chest, anyways. At least that I, I don't think there is. How do we get to that tower? Oh, it's this house. Uh, here. This has a pretty useful piece of equipment that we can't really use for a long time. It's a peacemaker. It is what we would call a gun. And none of us use guns, except for Barrett. But he uses, like, guns that are grafted to his arm. Which is not a peacemaker, so it's uh, not going to come in use anytime soon. Is there... Yeah, here we go. Got a guard source. Now, sources, they're kind of like tabs from Chrono Trigger or nuts from, uh, you know, Dragon Quest. They increase your stats permanently. Generally speaking, I, uh, I just feed them all to Cloud because he's always in the party for the most part. So why not have one super strong soldier? There are, you know, arguments to spread it out and give it to characters that need it. Or maybe, uh, you know, if you have like a magic source, just give it all to the person you consider a mage. But, I don't know, to each their own, right? Uh, yeah, no, Cinder is making monsters. Yeah, that's uh, true. As long as you're using their stuff, you can't really do too much about it. You could try to fight it, but if they shut off power to you, then you're in for in for a long haul, I think. Hmm, that's 
guess just a simple outlook on life there for that old man. Like, I got my health, I eat well, I'm good. Mm, all right. Jealous. And there's a bunch of shops up here. I believe there might be some other... But I want to come and visit. Rude. Hi. Oh, you work Mithril Mine. Right, we'll be uh, going there soon. Well, probably this episode, actually. Eh, we'll be making it this episode. Yeah, probably this episode. Well, so Soldier wiped out... Well, actually, Shinra wiped out the uh, avalanche for the most part when they uh, crushed the plate. Though, I don't think we refer to ourselves as an avalanche going forward. Um, this is technically, I guess, new avalanche, this group of people. I don't know where the name comes from, because, yeah, I, after, after Barrett says, like, uh, I'm the leader of Avalanche, I think that's, like, no, there's one other time it's referred to, I, well, a couple other times it's referred to, but not really when it comes to describing the group. Barrett mentions them here and there, but not, like, we're Avalanche, it's... It's just that we're we're us. We're not we we are technically I guess in canon Avalanche now or new Avalanche, but uh, we're not the uh, not the same Avalanche that he was leading. And I actually missed what this guy was saying, but yeah, I guess you're pretty smart. Oh, uh, I mean we didn't kill a son, but all right. I wish. Hi, right, what do you sell here? This is the item store. Couldn't read the goddamn sign. Um, so yeah, Fury Tranquilizer. We'll want some Hypers in the near future. Furies are alright, but we don't really need those right now. Or ever. I don't really use Fury. But having some Tranquilizers around the Curate... It, it's not even worth curing, to be honest. But at the same time, it's not one of those things that's really bad. It increases your attack and lowers your accuracy a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and buy Earth. We already have Poison. And Heal. Go ahead and equip those in a second. Earth is actually a strong materia that uh, we'll uh, want to use soon. You can buy upgraded weapons here for Cloud and Aerith. Not worth it. Uh, not worth it for Barrett either because we just stole a better one. And we're going to be getting a better weapon for Tifa around the corner. So I'm not even going to worry too much about it. Now, let's go ahead and equip that Earth stuff. Here, see, costs 6,000 to level up, and it has three spells. It's uh, it's pretty good. It, uh, not many enemies are completely weak against it. And then we have Heal, which cures Poisona, and then we can get Asuna in a little bit, and Resist, I believe, kind of puts like a berry on you that makes you resistant to all status ailments. But that's not for a while, and yeah, we're not gonna get it anytime soon. So yeah, let's head out. Now, we will have some new enemies to fight going forward. There are a couple of new enemy skills that we want to get. Uh, though... Yeah. She still has that? Okay, good. Now, we want someone with a level divisible by four. And Aerith is divisible by four right now, so... Sadly, not the encounter I was looking for, but let's go ahead and use Matcher Magic and see how this does. We're looking for a squirrel enemy. I want to put her in the back row if she's not already in the back row. Oh, she's... is she already in the back row? I think she is. Yeah, so Matcher Magic's pretty awesome. And I will be feeding kills to Aerith for a little... No! Damn it. <laughs> Oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> um. Crap. Well. That's not good. Cloud. I was meant to get a status there. So probably like nine more battles for Cloud to level up to 16. Yeah, okay, sure, fine. We can do that. We're gonna go over here first though. 
No, oh, Chocobo tracks. Shocking. Ah, oh, crap. I, for some reason, did not even, even think. That's the wrong button. That she was near the level for that. God, I wish Master Magic was all the way up top. This might not actually kill them. I killed one of them. <sighs> yeah, about nine battles will get Cloud to uh, level 16, and that will allow us to get what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a level 4 Suicide, which is a, a very handy ability to have. And these are Chocobos. Wark? I like Qua better myself, but Wark's good too. Good dance. Uh, if you examine these guys and, you know, say Wark, they give you your first summon of the game, which is Chocomog. Which is a wind elemental attack, uh, which has two functions, actually. There's one where it just does, like, medium amount of damage, and then there's a rarer one called Death Blow that uh, does pretty high damage for what it does, but it only happens, like, one out of, like, I don't even know the formula, but it's, it's pretty rare. I don't really, really ever remember getting it. But if you do element to your weapon with Chocomog, it does give you Wind Element, which is a pretty decent element because a decent amount of enemies are weak to it. But we don't actually get access to any Wind Spells for a while. Except for that. I think if they get a crush in the marshes? Yeah. Hmm, well that'll be a problem. It'll probably be safer for if you get yourself a Chocobo. That way you can zip through the marshes with the Chocobo. The only way to avoid being attacked by the Midgar Zolum. Midgar Zolum? It's a serpent like creature over 30 feet tall. It detects the footsteps of anyone in the marshes. And then BAM! It attacks! To avoid that, buy a Chocobo at, at Medium Chocobilly's uh, Chocobo Farm. To purchase a Chocobo, please talk to my grandson. He's in the Choco Stables at the far right end of the farm. Alright, that's nice. How much money do we need for that? I think it's like 3,000? I think it's 3,000. Hi! Do you want a chocobo? Give me one. You old folks are out of luck. Old folks? We're all out of chocobos. I'm taking care of the ones out here, out there for someone else. You know, if you really want a chocobo, you should go out and catch one. Want to know how to catch a chocobo? Uh, how do I catch one? A wild chocobo always appears with other monsters, but you won't be able to catch it just beca uh, because of the monsters. This is That is why you must defeat the monsters first before you catch the chocobo. And then... Wild chocobos are really cautious. They'll run away from the smallest things. But if you use greens, they'll force, uh, that'll focus on, they'll focus on them and it won't run away. Want to know how to catch a chocobo? Uh, what else? Whatever you do, don't make Chocobos angry. They're usually calm, but if you get them angry, you'll get hurt. Oh, and remember, if you get off a Chocobo, it'll escape. All right, dog. Uh, where are they? You see those claw prints out there? Wild Chocobos will appear in those areas. But if you don't have the Chocobo lure, they won't come out. They're very cautious by nature. Choco lure? Chocobo lure? Chocobo lure is a type of materia which attracts Chocobos. If, if you equip this, they'll come to you. But without it, they won't appear. This is true. So we need to get one of those. So, if we say not interested, he'll go, let's get down to business. Oh, it's 2,000. Okay, I thought it was like 3,000. But buy it. We have plenty of money. And we want to buy some greens. Now, greens are expensive. Uh. So yeah, the basic ones are fine. I believe we want this one for the enemy skill. And we could probably just do with like a couple of these for the normal ones. But uh, we'll see. I need to get into some battles anyways. Uh, he did give us the Chocobo Lure. I am gonna put that on Cloud, increase his luck. And I believe it also increases like uh, the frequency at which you can appear, or uh, Chocobos can appear on the, the frequency or level, like, uh, like a rank of the chocobo. It doesn't really matter right now, but I'm just gonna keep it on my characters anyways to level it up. 
Uh, being said, I'm gonna get Cloud up to level 16 because I'm silly and leveled up Aerith. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, really? Wait a minute. Hold a goddamn second. Did I actually learn that there? Oh, I did. Yo, I thought you had to be hit by it. What the hell? I'm confused. I thought you had to be hit by it. I am very confused, actually. I, uh... We have one tent. Um... I go ahead and use it, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can buy those. That's shocking to me, actually. I, uh... I totally thought you had to be hit by it. I don't know why you... Why did I even switch the materia, then? <laughs> That's a good question, Gronos. Why'd you even switch the materia, then? Uh... Well, we'll probably actually do that too as, as well in a moment, though I'm not sure if I want to. I think I need to have Aerith in the party for that one. But anyways, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and catch us a Chocobo. We're actually going to be looking for a specific formation of a Chocobo. Okay, I think this is a good one. A Chocobo. Okay, yeah, so this is a good one. Let's go ahead and... Where the hell is it? There it is. Do this. And then we want to hit it with this. Now, this is a level 16 Chocobo. You can tell by the two ostriches with it. And once we use level 4 Suicide, it will use Chocobuckle on the caster, which is... Uh, the person that used level 4 suicide, which is the person that should have the, uh... <laughs> the, uh, enemy skill on it. It does damage based off the amount of times you've run away, and we've run away once, which is why it was one damage. Now we just need to kill these guys, and we're gonna summon Chocomog here to, uh, show it off. Now there's one more enemy skill, Fledgling Summoner. Huh. <laughs> there's one more enemy skill around here that we can use. Yeah. Not use, but learn. It does require a little bit of setup. And Aerith gained another level, good for her. So, the main focus right now is actually getting a Chocobo. If we run through this swamp down here, we're gonna run into something called Mid Midgar Zolum, which is what we already told about, right? Now, the Midgar Zolum has a ton of HP, and you're not really meant to fight him until way later in the game. He has an incredibly powerful enemy skill called Beta. By incredibly powerful, it is slightly weaker than the Fire 3 spell, but it hits all enemies and there's no split to it. By no split, I mean it doesn't split the damage based on how many enemies it actually hits. So it is one of the best Fire skill spells in the game. Maybe the best group hitting Fire spell in the game aside from like a summon. Uh, I'm not even sure if that one's accurate. I don't know the power levels for the, the summons. It, it, it can be kind of game-breaking. So I'm going to learn it now, but I'm not really going to use it. Except for, like, on some random encounters that I'm trying to grind out to get, like, some level 2 limit breaks or level 3 limit breaks. Um, but it does require some setup, so give me one momento. Okay, so setup is pretty much all set at this point, except for one thing. We want to use... Actually, we want to range. Yeah, that should have done it. Uh, go ahead and use Tranquilizers on the party. Get Sadness. This is reducing the incoming damage to the entire party. Uh, no, well, the only other downside is the... Uh, the limit bars will grow less uh, often. I didn't actually go over my uh, material setup. Sorry about that. So, on Barret here, we have all restore, cover, and another all. On Cloud here, we have elemental fire on his armor to reduce fire damage, and then we have enemy skill on him as well, and another all just for AP purposes. 
We have Red 13 with Poison and Chocobo Lower because why not? Uh, I have Cloud in the middle because it seems like the Midgar Zone will not actually like kick out the middle one. It has the option in battle to pretty much punt a character out of the battle. Now, hopefully it's not Cloud. If not, if it is, I'll just have to reset. But the main strategy of this is I'm going to go in. We're going to fight the Midgard Zolom. You want to poison him. Then you're pretty much going to wait until his HP is around 1500. And then... Oh, get that off. And then we should be good to go. We want to keep Cloud at max health, if at all possible. So let's sense. I'm hoping... Red 13 will be able to poison this guy right off the bat. He's not, which is unfortunate. But yeah, we want uh, Cloud to keep his HP at max. So he has 4,000 HP. We want to get him down to like 1,500. Oh, nice miss. I have Barrett's new weapon on, which I haven't really shown yet. We don't want to cause too much damage until he's poisoned. Once he's poisoned, then we can do all the damage to him. God damn it, please poison. <laughs> That's all you need to do, dog, is actually like poison. Get limit breaks up, which is good. God damn it, dog, poison him. We need the poison. Like, if he doesn't get poisoned, that's a problem. Uh, yeah, you just use yours. I don't want Cloud to ca like do anything just yet. Man, this poison's pretty bad. It's just not happening. Which is not cool, game. Oh, got him, got him, got him. All right, so, cross slash. Pretty much gonna go out on a limb here and use all of our, uh, all of our attacks to, oh yeah, we have fire still. Go ahead, bear it. We'll have red 13 use a high potion on cloud. Okay, he kicked out Barrett. That's fine. We want Cloud to keep his his HP up. Um, go ahead, cast Bio again for all I care. Red Thirteen can die. That's fine. Beta. Okay, this is gonna hurt. Damn it! Okay. Crap. Okay, this should be fine here. So he's gonna counter with Beta. Barret should live. Barret does not live. This should be fine, though. So I made the mistake last time of... not having, um... the party in the back row. So this might not kill him. It does kill him. Alright, cool. So that's good. Yeah, I should have had everyone in the back row last time. My bad. We'll worry about these guys in a second. Uh, Red 13 is going to be alive, but we want to just keep running down here. And then we kind of want to run away. Hey, we actually ran. Holy crap. I didn't think we were actually going to run. Who needs a chocobo? Did Sethroth do this? Who, who else could have done this, man? You think it was just trying to pick its teeth? And just jump up there and impale itself? This Sethroth guy is pretty strong, I'd say. That's an understatement, Barrett. It's a power that we should, that we should respect. I mean, you're not wrong. While we're here, though, let's go ahead and revive you two and fix the order, because I hate that order. 
Why do you hate that order, Cronus? I don't know. Something about the main, you know, the party leader being in the lead of the party. Uh, but yeah, no, we have one of the best spells in the game right now, which is Beta. Go Us. I, I played it a little, uh, little too close to the freaking, I guess, nose there with the running across the mosh. I could have just gotten a Chocobo. But we've written Chocobo so many different times in the game, it's, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, now we're here. The, the Midgar Zone won't come this way, which is very kind of it. But he, he only lives in the swamp, right? That's actually him swimming underneath it. Though, when you see the size of it, how the hell is he underneath it when we're running across the top of it, right? For, for a while, I thought he was actually flying above the swamp, like in the sky, and that was his shadow. No, that's him submerged. We're just able to walk on water, I guess. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press like below. If you're not subscribed yet, want to hit my video section, check out some of the content, see if it's to your liking. If you're into watching me live stream, and twitch.tv slash Give my channel a follow to be notified when I go live. Either way, thanks for watching. Hope you all have a great day.